Bruce Arians gives two nothings about nothing. Yes, he right? gives two f- does not give a f- <laughs> right. Yeah, he, he does, does not. Yes, yeah, exactly. No. Right. Um, I was too worried about not swearing. Right I, know there. You I didn't were. know what to say. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yo, 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 what's up? It's Chris Sims on Button, and yeah, that's right. It's 2 nothing sitting here talking about something. We're talking about football on a Sunday night, week seven, almost in the books. We're sitting here watching yep. Steelers, Steelers Jets. That's good. My man's back from Big Ten country, Michigan State, seeing Sparty. We're here to talk some football. It was a good day, as always. I love London days when it starts out early with football. Oh. Wake up, drink some coffee, watch some football. That's great. And then end on a night like tonight with Jet Steelers. All good. Lots of action to the day. What's up, man? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. You get one in the bank, which right. is good. When you have a full slate of games that you have to keep track right. of, it's good to have one in the bank early. Yes. So you're like, all right, I got my analysis of that one. Now we can focus on fewer games in the 1 o'clock window. That's the best part about it. That's the best part about it. And as always, I want to say welcome to Chris Sims button presented by Lowe's yeah. Lowe's knows home improvement we know that for sure they improved my house and uh, I enjoy them being the sponsor of the show for sure that could be their next big thing yeah. improve my house improve your house there's yes. many things that or, could be improved or with my you know house. maybe get you to say a swear word or, word or something like that uh, <laughs> as you quote people if, about if I know swearing. anything about Lowe's they would love that they would jump on board with that immediately <laughs> hey, they're, they're like, sponsoring me is I don't know. Not what's going on here we're Lowe's over here <laughs> hey oh wait F-bomb every now and then all right so this is our promise to the homies and and Lowe's is well that we talk about every game from Sunday the statement wins we had some really high uh, profile key matchups we did on the docket uh, give me was, the headlines yeah. taking care of business uh, Lowe's home team help will get in there we'll take a quick look back at what happened on Thursday you were spot on with that one uh, thank you thank score. you thank you you picked a blowout and it was a blowout yeah yep Yep. You don't often pick blowouts, but yep. you got one there. So let's save that for later. We got the Monday Night Football preview, but let's start with the Super Bowl rematch Whoa. in Santa Clara. It was Patrick Mahomes versus Brock Purdy and the Kyle Shanahan's, and it was the same result. Chiefs get the win, 28-18. Now, because we like Kyle, he's your good buddy, yeah. and we like the 49ers, we will immediately mention all the injuries that they have on that side <laughs> of the right. ball, both sides of the ball, really, yes, offensively and defensively. Right. Just got to throw that out there. I know a lot of teams have injuries, but it does seem like the 49ers, when you don't have Debo and McCaffrey and Ayuk leaves with a knee injury right. that looks No Javon Hargrave, no Hufunga, who went, was an all-pro two years ago. Yes. I mean – just yes. get that out of the way first. Yeah, you know, right. I, I, you still have to play the game. You still have to win. And they were still in this game. So yes, just they get were. that out of the way first. Right. But I don't think that should take too much away from the Chiefs who went on the road, went west, took care of business against a still very talented 49ers I, team. I mean, I, I don't even know. It's hard to, like, find out words or phrases that can explain the Kansas City Chiefs without, like, saying some of the same stuff I feel like we've said before. I mean, this is who they are right now as far as football. It's kind of like, hey, yeah, it's not a pretty offensive show like we used to see in the early days of Patrick Mahomes. And what we have said from the start, right, from the start of this year, let's change the narrative about it a little bit. The defensive defensive Kansas City Chiefs, that's how they are winning football games. And then they have this ultimate magic because of the guy at quarterback where – he has a feel and a knack in the biggest moments of the game to go, okay, yeah, my stats aren't good or whatever. They're average, blah, blah, blah. I don't really give a shit, okay? He two nothings about nothing, okay? <laughs> Where he goes, wait, this is the moment. I, I have to come up clutch. I got to make the play here. This is it here for us to take control of the game or put them away. And he's phenomenal that way. Now, this wasn't a pretty game. It was sloppy, both sides of the both sides. Kansas City started with a fake punt, didn't get it right. Uh, Purdy throws an interception almost immediately after. Mahomes is throwing an interception, more Purdy interception. So it had a little bit of everything that way. The 49ers not covering a punt. McCole Hardman running down the sideline like untouched, not really making a move, just going, "I'm going that way," and nobody there. So it wasn't like you looked at it and went, "Whoa, these are two really high functioning teams playing at their." highest level it was more like no there's you know one great team that is yet to play I think complete great football on both sides of the football and then another team that maybe has had more moments of looking great than the other than the Kansas City Chiefs but also have had other moments where it looks worse than any moment we've seen with the Kansas City Chiefs and they find ways to beat themselves as well right but I'm amazed by Kansas City in things that you've heard me say a lot their physicality in these type of games. We always talk about Shanahan in the run game, and then Kansas City plays them, and they can't. I mean, and then the Niners can't run. 
The Kansas City Chiefs almost ran for a hundred more yards than the than the San Francisco 49ers, 90 yards, whatever. It was something somewhere in that range. I mean, that's incredible, right? They do that. We know the 49ers, their offense, wait, they can't run the ball consistently. They're making Brock Purdy turn the ball over. They're not good on third downs against this Chiefs defense. So there's a lot of redeeming qualities about the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. And they're great at situational football, and their defense is legit. And, of course, they got that quarterback and some toughness on the offensive side of the ball. That just translates to them winning games, and that's really all you can say about them right now. And if you have already noted in the comments that the Chiefs are without Isaiah Pacheco, Rasheed Rice, and the leading receiver was Noah Gray in this game, yeah. you're going to have to delete that now because I just <laughs> mentioned it. So go back and delete that comment uh, because, yeah, they're, they're struck on the offensive side as well. But this is now 27 straight games. I saw this on NFL.com yeah. that they have allowed 28 points or fewer. 27 straight for the Chiefs. So, I mean, last year they don't win the Super Bowl without their no, defense. No, no right? way. So they right. were already. We say yes. we got to get over. Uh, last year they were already winning with their defense, and they've just carried that over. I, this it's year. really felt like it's carried ever since the playoff run in the year to go beat the Eagles in the Super Bowl, right? Mm-hmm. That unbelievable performance they had to stop that Eagles offense in that Super Bowl carried over to last year where they were like, we're still awesome. We're still riding the high of beating the Eagles. And they continued it through the playoffs until the offense caught up and was like hey wait look we're actually pretty good too now we got a full team now it kind of feels that way again almost to a degree but I do think the offense is functioning at a little bit higher level than maybe we saw last year in some of their lulls or, or you know, valleys of, of offensive play where we're like, oh, that is ugly. Again, it's not pretty right now, but you do. I do talk about, hey, a team having a plan, a team playing a certain way, an identity, right? Kansas City does have that. And if you watch them right now, what they're really trying to do, two tight ends on the field a lot, three tight ends on the field a lot. They know who they are. They're not trying to go, oh, we want to throw it and do all that. They, we're not great on offense. We're just going to be smart. We're going to run the ball. We're going to chew up the clock a little bit. We're going to keep ourselves in third and manageable. That's the interesting thing you see. I mean, the Chiefs are these teams that it's second and nine. Right in the old days, you'd be like, "Well, here comes Mahomes. They're going to throw something aggressive here." Second and nine, they go, "Let's run it up the middle again. Let's just get the third and five, and then Mahomes will get six yards or eight yards or whatever." Right? It's a different approach, but of course, it's so effective. They're so mentally tough, physically tough. I do feel like they're in the heads of the 49ers to a degree, and you know, they put a lot on Brock Purdy's shoulders today with the fact that they couldn't run the ball, and like you said, the injuries the 49ers had yeah. that made it hard on Purdy. And then Purdy, I do think he'd tell you, yeah, he missed some throws in the game today and and had a few moments where I'm sure he would want those plays back. So if the 49ers have to stay in it with Brock Purdy and not much else around him, injured stars, can they do it? They're three and four right now. Well, I I think they're – They'll they'll be a team that hangs in there, right? And be like, what's my my old phrase? You know, they'll be a pain in the ass, but I'm not going to go. Oh, oh, they're about to take over the NFC that way, right? I know. No, Brock Purdy needs a little help. I do think Christian McCaffrey is very close to being healthy. I would be shocked actually if we didn't see him next week. Okay. Then they have a bye week, so hopefully they can get a little healthy during that time period, get some guys back, uh, and start playing at a higher level. But no, without. Without some of these guys, and we're not going to have Hargrave all year, you know, Hufunga, I think, has got a while before we see him again. Dre Greenlaw, I don't even know what the update is. It sounds like Ayuk's out for the year. Debo Samuel will be back. He was just sick today. They need the majority of those guys that I said could come back. They're not going to beat in the second half of the schedule the Buccaneers and the Packers and the Bills and the Bears and the Detroit Lions with like, hey, Brock Purdy, you'll carry us through this stretch. No, they need a little something there to help him out. The 49ers, I think, uh, will be able to continue to run the ball. Right? This is a tough matchup for them because Kansas City has big people up front and Spags is not afraid to be aggressive. Plus, in a game like this today, especially when they're injured, we know Kansas City is not afraid to play man-to-man against anybody. Mm. And this is not an offense that's great at beating man-to-man coverage, and that's part of the reason they've won two Super Bowls against them. Right, So not everybody's been able to play them the way Kansas City plays. I still think the 49ers are a playoff football team. I do. But, again, how good they are in the playoffs, how dominant – you know, that, they got to prove that to me here down the stretch. If you have watched Chris Sims Unbuttoned previous weeks and on Wednesday of last week, you noted how Steve Spagnuolo and some of those creative defensive coordinators right. have given Kyle Shanahan yeah. trouble. There it is, four wins. 
Uh, no losses or no wins for Kyle Shanahan there. Next Gen Stats gave this one too. The Chiefs defense, you talked about man to man defense. Yeah. The Chiefs defense recorded three interceptions playing man coverage against the 49ers. They're most in a game under defensive coordinator Steve Spagnolo. You got to you got to be willing to play some man to man against the great offenses in football like we talk about, right? There's just at times not that you have to like live in it all the time, but there's going to be a few plays or situations where you go, "Wait, this offensive coordinator's too good. He's got too many things he can do yeah. I can't cover it all the run game and the pass game and all of it play in zone right they're going to move some of my zone guys and we're going to be in compromised positions so they they have a formula that's tried and true against the San Francisco 49ers and they just know when the right time is to play man-to-man -man. and we've said this in the past too you know if there's a fault to the Shanahan offense if I had to look at one thing and again it's like they're still really good at this thing it's that when they can't run the ball their drop back pass game has not always been famous for just standing on itself and going hey well don't worry we can't run it we can still throw it for 350 and win the game that way right that's not been the strength of Shanahan through his years or I don't think it's the strength of Brock Purdy and then you couple that with a team that plays defense creative they crowd the line of scrimmage not afraid to play man to man and your receivers are hurt yeah that's going to be tough just Justin Reed, the first pick, phenomenal, right? Hicks's pick was really damn good towards the end of the football game. Uh, in the end zone, they got Carlaftis got pressure and yeah. hit Purdy because he's throwing, right? But again, it's the chaos they create, how hard they play, how physical they play. They're one of the few teams that can kind of match that in the 49ers. The 49ers usually are leaders in that department, right? Ayuk, it could be an ACL. That's what they're concerned about. It definitely about. That is going to be. I'm not trying be to a break bummer. news, but it, it looked bad. His knee bent in a way it should not bend. Three and four for the 49ers now still in the mix, yeah. but that margin for error now is very, very thin. It's very thin. thinner. The, it's the thing thinner. that works for them is that I don't know if anybody's going to run away with this division, right? So that's where they got something at least in their favor to yeah. where they're still very much in it in that, in that category. And I don't think there's – I don't look at Seattle going, oh, yeah, they're just going to dominate people people and move forward here of course 49ers beat them just a week ago so they still have that but yes certainly not as dominant as we've seen in the last few years you know no one's going to run away with the nfc north either every team's going to end up with probably 13 wins in that division for the first time in nfl history the lions though did give the vikings their first loss of the season 31 29 jake bates coming through with the field goal to win it ice in his veins uh so the lions have done it now they uh they have they have given the Vikings their first loss, and Melkor 23 says this, damn yeah, okay, yeah. the whole Detroit Lions team, players <laughs> and coaches, started the game off horrible, didn't waver, yeah. took the game over, went through more turbulence, but ultimately overcame and pulled out the W. That's a good summation of how that game went, because there were times where the Lions were controlling it, not early, yeah. but then in the middle of the game, and then it's like, oh, some adversity, oh, we're down, just like that. Right. Jared Goff takes him down, gets him in range for a field goal. Start the game with a fake punt, gave the short field to the Vikings. Aaron Jones bounced it outside, ran it for a touch, and seven nothing like that. I'm sitting there going, "Oh, f***ing. here goes Ahmed for these Lions, aggressive, <laughs> fake punt to start the game, just jump starting the Vikings, right?" And then I, th I mean, I felt like I think it was a three and out. They couldn't really do anything. The Vikings went down and get kicked a field goal, and you went, "Man, Vikings are really controlling this." I mean, wow, are they just gonna are they gonna do this to Detroit? And then like that, it just switched. And I'm telling you. Jameer Gibbs breaks that run along the right side and breaks the guy's ankles, Oof. right? Not long after Montgomery went out with a little bit of the, the banged up knee or whatever. And it was like, holy shit, the game totally flipped on his head. You can't stop the Lions now. They're just going up and down the field, and the Vikings couldn't do anything on the offensive side of the ball. I, 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 you're, the Lions offense, of course, is in the combo for the best offense in all of football. And then I think when you couple that talent, the scheme, the constant attack, they're never looking for, oh, let's just throw a three-yard slant. Let's just throw a four-yard out route and get the – no. It's like we're running the ball to gash you. We're dropping back to throw, and we're looking for 20 every time we throw it. And, of course, it just puts tremendous pressure on the Vikings. And part of the reason I like them with this matchup is just because I do think with their ability to run and how they attack – took away the Vikings' ability to be so crazy creative pre-snap, right? Think about this. You're, you're at the line of scrimmage. You're the Vikings. We're blitzing. Or no, we're going to fake the blitz, but we're showing it, right? We're faking it. We're faking it. We're faking it. Okay, sad hut. Wait, I'm dropping out to get into my coverage. Oh, wait. He's 
acting like he's going to hand the ball off. Hold on, let me stop because he's going to hand it off. Oh, no, it's play action. I didn't get back far enough. And now, oh, no, Almond Ross St. Brown's open for 20 yards over the middle, right? So they had to pick and choose their moments of when they can do that. And then I think the other thing that's hard for the Vikings in this one, and we got positives to talk about the Vikings True. too, but the Vikings don't – they can't play man, just like we just talked about with mm. the Chiefs and the 49ers. The Vikings are a zone team. They don't trust any of their guys on an island versus receivers like you got there in Detroit. So I think because of that too, that's another tough element for them. I'd like to crowd the line of scrimmage and stop the run, but – I got to do it and play zone too, and that's hard to do. And we saw Detroit kind of early on took a minute to figure it out. And once they figured it out, I mean, the the vault opened. Well, it, that third and seven at the end of the first half when the Lions just ran it with Jameer Gibbs and he scored the eight-yard touchdown. I mean, that right there, there aren't a whole lot of teams. Third and seven, time winding down, end of the first half. They're gonna be like, we're going to run the ball no, here, we and, don't. and we're going to do it aggressively in a way that we think we may score they're com- they're confident in it. Yeah. they are they, they, they don't call it to yeah just think something whatever some bull crap's gonna happen they call a run in that instance because they went wait there's something they do down here that we like and we feel like we can gash this right here right and that's what i love and then i think you couple that with i mean jared goff's incredible so they did get some pressure on yeah. jared goff yeah. so next gen stat says that he was under pressure on a season high 51.7 percent of his dropbacks against the vikings he finished 10 of 11 in those situations 164 yards and two touchdowns so that's the crazy thing with with jared goff yes. is that there are numbers and we saw him last year if you get enough pressure to him sometimes he does have trouble right, right. he's not the right. mobile quarterback no, and you right. get around his body but you have to get like to him Right, it can't be like half pressure. That's right. There's there's different types of pressure. Today was pressure of like people are around me, but I don't have to move, and that's when he thrives because he is fearless. I just did a thing on Football Night in America at halftime with people all around him, and then we show a close up of his eyes with a guy hitting his arm. That was a great play. Right, he hits Tim Patrick on the deep in cut, but just you get he doesn't panic. He shows no panic within his body, but then when they focus in on his eyes, he doesn't even look at the pass rush. He has no fear of it. He just stands in there and goes, wait, I, my eyes are down the field and I'm going to make the appropriate throw and the paper appropriate read. And that's how we function. And he's amazing. It's, it's truly one of the greatest career transformations I've ever seen from a player. And I'm, I'm really dead serious because it's a guy, like I said, they were trying to hide at the end of their, his career with the Rams. Mm-hmm. They were trying to hide him. They were literally winning in spite of him. And they gave him away to the Detroit Lions. And the Lions found a way to rebuild him, play a way that fits him, and gave him confidence, I think, in his own abilities maybe that he didn't have or made him feel better in some way to where uh, he's just a different guy. And he makes me feel different when he has the ball in clutch moments too because I just go, oh, Jared Goff's got the ball late in the game. Four years ago, I'd be like, well, they're going to lose. Yeah. They're not going to learn. Unless not. they can create it somehow, yeah. you know, some fluke gimmick plays. And yeah. But like that last drive, yeah. I mean, he's throwing the, the out to Amon Ross St. Brown, I don't know, 15, 20 yards down the field and pretty tight coverage. That was a gutsy Guts. throw Guts. to set up the field goal, get them a little closer yeah. there. Right? How many times this year have we seen teams, too, go, well, we're here for the 50-yard field goal. Exactly. We'll just call it quits and that's it. No, they did the right thing there, and uh, yeah, he was he was great today. Uh, I, I could talk about the Lions the whole time, and I'll let Sam Coy's <laughs> ten uh, talk about. Brian Branch, he goes, damn, okay, Brian Branch, another great pick this week to make it three in two weeks. He seems to always be around the ball making plays. I believe Branch and Kirby Joseph will need to play at a Pro Bowl level to make up for the loss of Hutch, and I think Branch can. Yeah. I think Kirby Joseph can be pretty good De- as well. Definitely. So, I mean, Branch is phenomenal. He's yeah. just a, a great football player who's like, there's no aspect of his game that's not really good. Can cover, can tackle, play zone, reads the quarterback eyes, has feel for the offense, whatever. Forces fumbles. I think he even forced a fumble today, and I think they called it back for something. Well, it was the uh, uh, yeah, it was the what was it? It was the fumble it? on the sideline, which was actually very close. Right. The receiver um, Naylor, I think it was. Yeah. Um, barely stepped out before he lost the ball. Oh, that's what it was. Exactly right. Good recollection. See, you're all over the details of all Lions games, always. always. Uh, But we should say something nice about the Vikings. Well, the the Vikings, again, uh, I look at the Lions and go, they're one of the best teams in football, and the Vikings are too. This is a little bit like, this wasn't like, oh, man, the Vikings just aren't in the class of what we thought they are. No, they were in this game without a doubt. 
I mean, Sam Darnold played damn good. You see Aaron Jones and his ability to run the football. The big thing with the Vikings, I think, is just going to be, do they have enough studs on defense in big games? It, because they have to rely a little bit on Flores tricking it up and scheme a lot. And that, I think, is what we're, we're going to kind of figure out about them. Detroit's not a whole lot different there. Detroit has at least the big people where you can just go, hey, we could stop the run with our big people. We don't need to, like, totally load the box and do crazy stuff like that as well, right? But without no Aiden Hutchinson, they're going to have to create their own stuff too. I think it's two defenses in both of these teams that aren't going to be afraid to be creative and aggressive going forward. And I yeah. think you guys will even continue that with Aiden Hutchinson because, one, you have to to create a little pressure. But I also think your coaches don't care because they go, wait, our offenses are good. We don't want to die slow deaths on defenses, have teams going on 10-minute drives. We either want to make a play and get them off the field or create a turnover or get them three and out. Or, fine, they go down as five-play, 70-yard drive, and then we got the ball back, and here we go again. I think they're willing to play aggressive on both sides of the ball. That's what makes both of them a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, Sam Darnold, the Vikings, they're, they're damn good, and they're definitely still one of the best teams in the NFC. I think they both talk about explosive plays on the defensive side. You know, I think the rare teams that you know, we always talk about the explosive plays on the offensive side. Yeah. You can get the explosive plays on the defensive side and bust up a, a drive just like that. Uh, so the five-win Detroit Lions, the five-win Minnesota Vikings, they are not the only five-win team in the NFC North. The Green Bay Packers got a nice win against the Houston Texans at home. 24-22. Brandon McManus signed on Wednesday. Made the game-winning 45-yard field goal with no seconds on the clock. So he gets a game ball his first week on the job there. Uh, Jordan Love, a couple interceptions, but some nice plays as well. As yeah. Following in the footsteps of Brett Favre, the fine <laughs> tradition of Packers, <laughs> uh, Packers quarterback. <laughs> this was a good game. I think some positives for, for both sides, but the Packers did make life tough on both sides of the ball for the Houston Texans. They did. The, the Packers, I came away from the game going, there's no doubt the Packers are the better team. And I mean, here's the first thing that's really impressive. Just bottom line, like, quote, right? They just go, they lost a turnover battle 3-0 to zero mm -hmm. and won 24-22 against one of the better teams in the AFC. That, to me, says a lot, right? That tells you that they kind of controlled the football game. The Packers, as we've talked about, I think are one of the most talented teams in football. I think they're young, and they still make some careless mistakes and do some stupid things every now and then. Yeah, they, 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 that's part of it. Uh, but, man, when I see them on the field, I just go, man, there's a lot of elite players out there. And they've kind of taken the approach, too, I think very similar to the two teams we just talked about. They're aggressive on defense. We're going to cause turnovers. We're going to get off the field on a three and out, or you're going to go down and score quick. But our offense is going to be back on the field. We're not going to let you sit over there. Jordan Love and Dobbs and Wicks and Jaden Reed and Jacobs, we're going to be out there soon. And they attack. And that's the thing that I look at with all three teams that we've talked about so far in the NFC North, and I actually think the Bears are getting there too as far as becoming that team. They're just ne – it's unrelenting mm -hmm. on both sides of the ball. Every play, it's like, holy cow, what defense are they in? What blitz are they bringing? And then on the offensive side of the ball, it's like, what's coming now? Is it the reverse? Are they running up the middle? Is it the reverse flea flicker? Is it the reverse flea flicker screen? I mean, what's coming, right? And it's just constant that way. And then it's like, wait, are they going to bludgeon us up the middle, which they can do? And then, like you just said, my man Jordan Love – it's, he doesn't know the check down is sometimes. <laughs> He's literally like, I'm just going to keep pushing the ball yeah. down the field, and I might make a mistake or two, but we're going to make more plays than I am mistakes. And so far that's working. When he starts to really function, I think, at his highest level, which I don't think he is yet, I mean, the Packers are going to be tough, tough to beat. I will say, just like I said with the Vikings and the Lions, the Packers are one of the best teams in the NFL. It's crazy. They're all in the same division, but we've talked about, you know, the Chiefs, three NFC North teams so far, and I've said four of the eight teams we're talking about. I'm like, yeah, they're pretty good. They're one of the best teams in the NFL. <laughs> Green Bay with a first win with a turnover margin of minus three or worse since 2019. We got a tweet or an X from Magnet24QB yeah. that says, there is a big question. The Packers and their defense, they're playing lights out. What do you think of that English lesson? There it is You're right funny. there. So Drew You're has funny. been listening to the podcast. Here. I did have, uh, kept my wife, Kathleen, asked me. Yeah. She goes, I, I, I love that. I love that he sticks by not spelling it T-H-E-I-R. Hey, she, she, she supports you in She's that. She's got me. She was curious. Yeah. She goes, does he also spell there the apostrophe R-E-T-H-E-R-E? -E? 
Yes. Wow. There's okay. no conjugation, no <laughs> nothing of that. Okay. Yeah. It's there, there, yeah. and more there. T H E R E. You know who I'm talking about. Wow. Okay? okay. Let's not act like we don't understand English all of a sudden. Okay, yeah. everybody. Is out that there? the only word you do it with? Is it you? No, just there's probably up. other ones. You got to tell me some other ones that that would hold <laughs> truth with it. I'm going to tell you. I'm also. Yeah, your your would be oh, one. 100 percent. Y O U R. Every time. Okay. Never going to change. Do you Don't. use apostrophes for I, like I'm? Will you, you do it for that? I am. Yeah, but you yeah, will. but I rarely you write I'm. Don't but like I it, would, but I yeah. would, I guess. But yes, that, but I would if I ever wrote that. <laughs> if word. I ever wrote that word, but I probably write I am every time. <laughs> I don't like apostrophes. All right. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> but, true. There, okay. but I, I think um, when I look at, I mean, this is a, two good football teams: the Texans and the Packers. The one thing I'll say: the Texans ran the ball great today, but 86 yards throwing the ball, 10 for 21. Of C.J. Stroud. I mean, those yeah. are numbers that we we don't talk about with C.J. Stroud. Weird. And it shows you they miss Nico Collins. There's no doubt about it. I, I hope everybody, because I've had people come up to me like, you really think Nico Collins is the number one receiver? And I'm like, get out of your like five years ago fantasy league numbers crap. Like, mm -hmm. Stephon Diggs is still the best receiver in football. What? Like, no. No, Nico Collins is their guy, and they miss him. Diggs is a great compliment to him. But he's not the guy you can go, wait, we're going to formulate the whole offense around you. That's why Buffalo got rid of him, everybody. They didn't get rid of him because they were like, he's so awesome and he makes plays for us everywhere. And everybody has to double team him every week, but we don't want him anymore. I mean, no. This is, he is awesome number two receiver, high one, whatever else. But, yeah, a little concerning there. There's two things with the Texans, awesome in total defense, but – when you drive the bottom, they let you score a touchdown almost every time. They're mm. one of the worst teams in football in the red zone, which is crazy. You have a top five defense and total yards, but when teams get down in the red zone, you can't stop them. And then, yeah, we've seen these little peaks and valleys from their offense this year that we did not see last year. Joe Mixon was great, but certainly the pass game, and that's something I'm a little interested in to watch back on film the Packers and what they did to defend this this uh, Houston Houston okay. offense okay. today. Well, of note there for Wednesday, a possible yep. Yep. deep dive. So Houston now is 1-2 and two versus the NFC this season. They are undefeated 4-0 and oh versus the AFC. So that could be an issue in the Super Bowl for the Houston Texans <laughs> if they get there. They're going to have to worry about that only until that point. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was a good game, though. Houston still hasn't passed that road test. They really haven't. You talked about it with Florio right. on the pick spot on right. Thursday. Yeah. They haven't passed that. Signature win on the road with this current group. I know, no, I don't really think that, you know, and I said this, I think, with Florio and even you last week. I don't think they've played one game yet that I would go, that was like high level football on both sides of the ball. I'm really impressed with what they did there, right? I, I don't think we've seen that yet. Hopefully it gets to that point. I don't think we'll see it really totally until they get to Nico Collins. But, you uh, know, with. with, with Oh, oh whoa! My gosh. They're back. We've got the group. The group is back. Three seventy-two. Why? Five eleven. Oh wow! Okay, wow! Okay, wow! Going out. Oh, looks like Todd, there's a little Todd, pressure. Todd. Oh, quarterback. Oh. Was he? Oh ah, my gosh! One, one hand. Catch. One hand. Wow. It's three seventy-two. Why stick Z spot? Okay. You sound like some idiot I've seen on social media who can't say plays when Gruden gives to him. Hold on, let me throw it to your lefty. Yeah, yeah let's go. Let's see this oh, return to sender. Good catch, Todd. Uh, way to adjust the body, Todd. Way to go, Todd. Wow. Thank you as always, guys. Well, you, but thank you. Wow, that was good. <laughs> great one-handed catch. We'll have to do a slow motion replay yeah. of that. And while you're doing that, dun dun da 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 da. Russell Wilson on third and goal throws a touchdown. Steelers up thirty to fifteen in the fourth quarter on the Jets. This is incredible. I. I don't even know what to say. The, the, the Jets have no one to blame but their star players, too. Uh -oh. That's what's like. That's what's crazy. Aaron Rodgers, bad interception before the half. They're about to take control of the game and put the Steelers in a spot where you're like, the Steelers are done if they go down and score right here. They throw an interception. He's wide open. Garrett Wilson down the middle. He threw it behind. The guy made a great play. Don't get me wrong, but still a bad throw. Then Garrett Wilson off his chest oh. pops in the air. And they get a return down to the one-yard line, and Russell Wilson gets a quarterback sneak for a touchdown. And this vaunted Jets defense getting run on and out physical once again. And, yeah, the Steelers just went down on an 11-play, 75-yard drive to go up by 15 wow. points. Incredible. I did not think we would be seeing this right now. Russell Wilson, I'll say. He's been pretty good so far. We'll talk about it a little more later. Yeah. I didn't mean to totally break and, it out. And uh, Devontae Adams, just one tackle. 
in the w- game so far. Just one Only tackle one tackle on the interception. That's not what, you, that's not what you traded for. <laughs> uh, time for our next segment. We'll keep an eye on that one. Give me the headlines presented by Hyundai. So this is where we go into the printing press. It is late at night. It is 11.01 on the <laughs> East Coast <laughs> as we tape this. Uh, our first game that we're going to talk about, Seahawks. Nice win against the Falcons, 34-14. Your headline for this one is? G-Money. Geno Smith. Geno Smith. Other people's trash might be this person's treasure. You never know. <laughs> he was trash to the Jets, but damn, he's a treasure for Seattle Seahawks. Um, they're they're four and three, and why I say G money, and I talked about it a little bit on Football Night in America with the pregame show. They're four and three because of him, because of him and his right arm, and because of their passing game. Right? They'd have no run game that you're gonna write home about and go, wow, it's really special and dominant that way. It's it's can Gino throw lasers around the lot to DK Metcalf and Lockett and Jackson Smith and Jigma and Noah Fan, and that's kind of how they win games. And today it was clicking on all cylinders. And I think the surprising part about today too was the defense. Mm. The defense showed up in a big way. But the, the hefty lefty tweeted yeah. at you and said, "Damn fellas, Seahawks look great today with their D line back healthy. What's the ceiling with this Seahawks team this season?" Thanks, boys. It 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 the the D line definitely changed things. Right. I do think it got them into we don't have to blitz or pressure quite as much. We can get back in coverage. We can worry about, you know, Drake London and Pitts and stop stop Kirk Cousins from surgically destroying us, which he's kind of done to certain teams in the past. Now, B. John Robinson and company ran the ball well, mm. but it looked like Seattle's defense took the approach of we're not going to let Kirk Cousins and company just dominate us in the past game. But more, more than anything, it was the Seattle offense that got this game rolling. And it was big plays to DK Metcalf in the pass game. And then Kenneth Walker with some great runs, great passes early on in the football game that got them out to a big lead to where I'm sure Mike McDonald was like, hey, we're up 17-7. Now I can call a lot of different pass defenses and I'm tricky that way. And it looked like the Falcons never really got into a rhythm passing the ball throughout the day. Yeah, the defense did have a lot to do with that. Boy, Mafe strip sacked and Derek Hall with a 64-yard fumble return. That definitely swung the momentum there. It was a three-turnover spree yeah. that really blew this game wide open. So while the offense did have many uh, good moments for the Seahawks, it was the defense at that moment that took over the game. It, it definitely and then the was. the Falcons had, didn't have a chance. The, the Boye Mafe fumble was, was the game, right? I mean, you, you look at that, and then I, I want to say – you know, was it the drive before, or the, or maybe the drive after when he throws the, uh, the, the interception when Drake London? Uh, it was the drive after, so he throws the. They're driving down again, and Drake London should have caught the ball, and it was a pick. But yeah, the Boye Mafe strip sack fumble was definitely the play of the game, and the game, the point of the game where you went, this is over. Mm-hmm. Kirk Cousins outside of the pocket. Of course, we know he doesn't run all that well. He doesn't even throw the ball all that well on the run, and then he tried to throw it. And where I blame him is just like, Boye Mafe was like a step away from him. And he was like, oh, I'm still going to try to throw this. And I just wanted to be like, man, you played too much football to think you're going to get that off with a guy arm length away from you, right? So he basically just smushes Kirk Cousins as he's throwing it. The ball falls on the ground. Hall picks it up. Down the sideline, our man uh, Devin Witherspoon made a great block running down and hustling to, to make sure he got in the end zone. But, yeah, good team win for the Seattle Seahawks. And defense showed a side today where – I, I wasn't sure they had that in them, honestly. I, I didn't. I didn't even know if they were going to be able to do that with the defensive line being back and yeah. being healthy. Hawk astrologer noted homie wants us to uh, to note that the Hawks are 4-0 when Byron Murphy plays. Oh, that's, so that's, that's interesting. Good to know. Yeah. No, I, I mean, defense, I think, will continue to get better. I do think there's enough good players there. And then I think that there is an adjustment period when you talk about picking up this Mike McDonald – Baltimore Ravens type of defense, right? There, there is a lot of rules and things that go into it that way. Um, but yeah, I would expect it to get better and better and the secondary to get better and better with how he causes certain zone blitzes and how they pass things off and all of that. Hopefully that's the case because Seattle is fun to watch and their yeah. offense is capable of being explosive. And Geno Smith is a damn good football player. And he showed that once again today. Falcons and Seahawks, two four and three teams now after that game. The Philadelphia Eagles improved to four and two, downing the New York Giants, who dropped to two and five. Your headline for this one is Oop, let me get to it. Okay. Guess who's back? Okay. Barkley's back. Don't need to guess. Yes, he's back. Don't tell John Mara. <laughs> I think he already he found yeah. out. Yeah, he found out? Yeah. 
Yeah, no. Second um, most rush yards by a player against his former team. Wow. The ultimate, well, almost the ultimate revenge game. He's awesome. I mean, <laughs> there's no other way to say it, right? Uh, he's the most exciting player, I think, in football when he's in open space. He might not be quite as fast as he used to, but he's still really fast, right? He's still really elusive, one-on-one -on -one tackling, break your ankles, shake you, whatever. And the other thing that I think Saquon has improved on as compared to last year or years that he was with the Giants, he run, he's running with more of a physical attitude, hmm. right? Saquon used to be a little bit like, hey, there's really no hole. Don't dance. Just put your head down and go smash it. And he would kind of dance to try to look for a bigger play, right? A little like Barry Sanders back in the day, yeah. which you understood because you're like, oh, he's made a lot of plays doing that, so let's let him do it, right? But I feel like he's gotten to a point of his career where he's gone, nah, my time will come to break the big, big one. I see three yards here. I'm going to put my head down and get four, right? Or just do that way. And I do think it's added to his – ability or ability to wear on a defense maybe more than than times past Saquon Barkley and then the Eagles D-line because Daniel Jones was under assault today I mean assault I know he didn't play great I don't think anybody would have played great with what I saw on that field today I mean the Eagles just steamrolled the Giants O-line and it didn't look like there was a lot of plays to be had. There was one throw he threw deep down the field today where I went, ooh, he should have hit that. But other than that, yeah, there wasn't much to talk about with the Giants offense. Let's do one uh, dots for Saquon Barkley here, yeah. the 55-yard rush. According to Next Gen Stats, top speed of almost 22 miles an hour, 21.93, uh, the second fastest speed by a ball carrier this season. Yeah, so uh, Saquon's got slot number two right now. He, he when, when like – when he got to the outside here and they lose contain, it's, 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 it's night, night. I mean, that's, that's, you know, that's what he wants to do. That's what we saw him do at Penn state. Right. You know, and this is where it's tough. Cause I think they're, they want the corner and we'll watch it back again. They want number three, right. Their corner to kind of banks to be the edge setter, but they're also playing man to man with him. So when his guy goes inside, mm. he can't stay on the edge. He follows him inside for a little bit, right? That's the problem about playing man to man sometimes against really good run defenses when you have your corner or a secondary trying to be the edge setter. Cause then it's like, wait, but if his guy goes inside, he's going to follow him for a step or two before he realizes his run. And now your edges in the same Barkley. Awesome. A.J. Brown, awesome, we know that. Hurts made some plays when he had to, run or throw. Defense was really good. Still got questions about the Eagles' offense. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't feel better about the Eagles' offense. Well, what about today. realistic takes? Yeah. It says this. Biggest yeah. thing that stood out for me is the Eagles, if they play through the run game, similar to how you said earlier in the yeah. year with Baltimore, needed to run the ball more, right. I think it's the same way with the Eagles. Barkley and that O-line is special and will open up the pass game. That, that, that's what I would like to see them do. Uh, I mean, that, that to me is what they were the year they went to the Super Bowl. It was more play through the run. Jalen Hurts runs, you know, run the ball again. Oh, little RPO pass. Oh, little bootleg, whatever. It was all through the run. Again, as I look at it right now, I just go, as I said to you last week, I said it again, I don't really know what's trying to be accomplished on offense at times. It's like they just call plays and they just go – I hope Hurts scrambles and makes a big play or makes a big throw. I hope A.J. beats somebody one-on-one. -on -one, or I hope Saquon breaks it. That's kind of what you feel like they play for on the offensive side of the ball. Again, the Giants' defense is pretty damn good, but to be one for 13 on third down when mm. the Eagles in that offense, that's embarrassing. I'm sorry. They have things every week where I just go, eh. Like, I know it's good and they made a few big plays, but – I don't, I don't want to just see big plays. I, you know, to me, great offenses are a little bit sometimes like we talked about with your Lions or the Packers. It's just this every time they get the ball, it's like they're moving the ball. It's, oh, my gosh, it's a nice run. Oh, it's the play auction off that run. Oh, hell, oh, it's a little gadget play. That's cool. And, and th there's just not a sustained pressure. The Eagles are like, oh, it's three and out. That was ugly. Oh, it's three and out. That was ugly. Oh, okay, they got a first down. It wasn't pretty, but they got a first down. Oh, they got another first down. Okay. Oh, they hit a go route to Devontae. Oh, Saquon broke it, right? That's, that's what it is. It's mm -hmm. never like they string together this drive where I go, man, that was smart. That was good stuff there, all that. That's what I question. But 
Defense was good. We'll see if it continues to get better. I don't know how great it was. Again, the Giants offense we know is not special, but either way, the Eagles continue their domination of my G-men. All right, that was Give Me the Headlines presented by Hyundai. Plenty of good games we already talked about. Plenty more still to come. We got the Commanders. We got the Bills. We got the Bengals. They all took care of business. We'll talk about them coming up next. Welcome back to Chris Sims Unbuttoned, presented by Lowe's. Lowe's knows home improvement. Time now for the taking care of business segment. And the commanders now qualify as a team that can take care of business. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yes, it is. It didn't is. they have the number two what pick last happening? year? What is happening? Yeah, what is happening? The Panthers, weren't they the worst? I mean, they were the worst team. Last- These right. were the two worst teams last year. Commanders commanding. I mean, com- and then they lose their number two pick, and they still command. What the hell is going on in the world here? 40-7, to seven, the final score. Andy Dalton throws the pick six, and the game was over. At, at that <laughs> really, I'm, I, I actually was going to be funny and say the same thing. <laughs> he threw a pick six, and that was it. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> no, but there really is not much. Like, you knew the commanders had to play, or, or the Panthers, excuse me, had to play kind of a perfect football game, right? They're, they're not that quality of a team. So for them to come out and then have kind of a successful first drive and throw the pick six, Dante Fowler makes a nice play, right? I mean, it really did feel like that. It felt like that was the game. The game. And then what was it? it it's, they get a long run on the next drive that sets up a field goal. And then there was a big PI on the next drive that set up another touchdown. It was like game over. It's 17, nothing. See you later, Carolina pack up and go home. So Jaden Daniels did pack up and go home. Well, no, he didn't go home. He was still there on the sideline. So a rib injury in the first quarter, his mom tweeted though during the game, he's fine. So good to know. Must have checked in with with mom, and we do know we don't know exactly how long he's going to be out. Those yeah. ribs can be kind of finicky. It can be finicky. He did seem to be in a fine mood though on right. the sideline. Right. I mean, forty to seven probably was was part of the issue there. So I mean, Marcus Mariota came in. Credit to him, and yeah. the offense kept rolling. I think they scored what six straight possessions yeah. at one point. They got they got, he has experience in the system. This is something that he's used to. So and he is hey he's got talent and he's got a similar skill set to Jaden Daniels, right? So you don't have to change the offense a whole lot. Carolina today was the first time, though, they looked like they were a team that was like, we give up. We give up. We're not good. The game got to 10 nothing, and he kind of felt like the air was out of the tires, right? They, do, they don't believe in their ability to keep pace with a team like Washington. Unfortunate, Jaden Daniels got hurt. Yeah, it was his long run that set up that field goal to go up 10 nothing. but on that long run, he kind of got bent like in a weird position, yeah. like folded right around the chest stomach area, and – you know those rib muscles, like for a thrower, as you know, they could be really hard. Like it, you know, those they call them the intercostal muscles, okay? Right? Because I pulled it before, Ooh. and it's very much like almost like the oblique injury. Anytime you twist or the arm gets away from the body and you're trying to throw it, right? It, it puts a lot of pressure on that area, and you're like, oh, I can't, oh, I can't quite do it, right? Yeah. It's kind of how it is, and that's what it looked like. He tried to warm up and throw a few throws, but you could tell he was like, oh. Hmm. And you just can't let your your upper body torque. I think that's what yeah, I'm trying to say there. Uh, but hopefully it's 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 better sooner rather than later. There's a lot of weird stuff in there, too, and not just the rib, but the cartilage, yeah, too, and exactly. the muscle it all is, around it. The intercostal muscles are kind of like cartilage, cartilage slash muscle. It's a little bit of that, like that. See, I mean, these are the things you learn at Chris Sims on button. Intercostal muscles. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> all this Not shit. conjugation. Not conjugation. Don't worry about that, though. They are going to be fine. <laughs> Swish B says, damn okay, Cliff Kingsbury, the entire commander's offense. You lose JD5. Ooh, good nickname. After the first drive you still drop 40 points they are rolling so now Washington in a five game span has 177 points the most they've ever had in a five game span since 83 so it, the most it, since 83. it's incredible I again I'm going to give Cliff Kingsbury a lot of credit for like the sixth week in a row because I keep thinking like this will be the week maybe they you know they people catch on right and it doesn't look like they catch on and they continue to block great up front they protect great they got underrated weapons on the offensive side of the ball. Robinson runs hard as hell. And the way I say all those things, and then you couple that with two quarterbacks that can run the ball a little bit themselves, 
it really puts defenses in a bind and have a lot of things to think about when you're defending Washington. Unbelievable job by Dan Quinn, the Commanders, all that. Never would have thought they'd be five and two sitting here through seven. Five weeks. and two right. for the Washington Commanders. How about that? Uh, the Buffalo Bills got another win. Tennessee Titans, thirty-four to ten, was the final score here. You said on the picks pod, you go Titans are going to make it tough on them. Yeah, and they did. Yeah, for the first half. Yeah, for and then the it first was twenty-seven nothing in the second half. Well, there's a few teams in football where it's just like, hey, this half of their team is good. But this, even their the half of their team that's good falls apart because the other half of the team sucks so bad that they just can't hold down the fort forever. And that's kind of what happens with, with the Tennessee Titans. We really kind of see it every week. The, awesome up front, a really good secondary, but the offense has got nothing to offer. They don't run the ball that well. We know what Mason Rudolph is at quarterback. He's not someone that's going to be able to, you know, take a team or an offense and carry it on his back or do anything like that. The cool thing was that I think we saw the effects of something we've been talking about for a while. So Amari Cooper, yeah. five targets, caught four of them, 66 yards. That touchdown, the first one that was uh, thrown his way or that he caught, uh, freed up Keon, Cole, uh, Keon Coleman, who had four catches for 125 yards, a career high. That, that to me, is, is really what it was. And I, I'm going to say, like, when we in the first half, I was a little like, Man, like, this is still not all that good. I was like, what's going on here? Cooper had had two drops, but they didn't run the ball, and you felt like, here we go again. Josh, If it's just not Josh Allen, they can't do anything. And on their first touchdown drive to make it 10-7 to Tennessee Titans, it was that. It was Allen making some crazy play, and he scrambled, and he found Coleman, and I was like, okay, again, like we just talked about with the Eagles. Like, yeah, that's a great play, but it doesn't make me feel good as an evaluator of a team, right, where I just go, oh, look at what they're doing, whatever they want. That's special right there. But not long after that, they started to hit a groove, and you started to see Amari Cooper become a part of the offense, and it did seem like it opened up a lot. And it was interesting to watch. I mean, it was I, I feel like the first game all year where most of the times I watched Josh Allen drop back from the second quarter on, it was kind of like, hey, whoa, it's just he threw it. He five steps, took a hitch step and threw it. Instead of like, take a five steps, nobody's there. Let me run around, break a tackle, and find somebody to throw to that way. That was refreshing. With their offensive line and their ability to run the ball with the, the running backs they got and Allen's ability to run the ball, and now you get a guy like Amari Cooper. I think you said it right. It's going to open things up. They have a guy finally they can go, wait, he's one-on-one. -on -one, we're throwing to him. Hey, it's double, you're double covered. Okay, we've got other people we feel like that now can take advantage yeah. of some things there. Yeah. And that's when I'm pumped for my boy Blue and the, and the Buffalo Bills. I mean, Shakir had as many targets as Coleman. And so it's like now he's the number three receiver, right? Now he's not a number two. He's a three. And then a guy like Dalton Kincaid can be a fourth option as a pretty good pass-catching tight end. So Yeah, yeah no doubt about that. The, a lot of good things for the Is Bills. Is there anything else I want to hit on there? I don't think so. I think we saved the Titans. We saved Titans sure, fans from talking about them but anymore. But I think we're good. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, you're, they did have a – the Titans <laughs> at, at the start of the third quarter, stupid fourth and one at mid, on their own side of the midfield. Like, yeah. the, your defense is playing great. It's 10-7. to 7. Some of these teams with this aggressive bullshit, like, literally I sometimes am going, like, are they worried about the other team? Like, they want to jumpstart them? Like, hey, you guys, we, we're out playing you, but we'd like to jumpstart you and make it a little better for Chris Sims in the viewing room. Here's a stupid fourth down call. We haven't been good on offense all year, but we think we're going to be good now, all of yeah. a sudden, in a big moment. If energy gets low in the viewing room, teams do that, though. They go, hey, Chris is kind of down here. He hasn't really said much <laughs> lately. Let's do go for a fourth down here uh, uh, from our own 30 and see if that uh, sparks the room, which it always does. It always does, and that was the end of the game, uh, in all honesty. They went down he hit a big pass to Coleman. He hit the Cooper touchdown, and that was all she wrote. They never looked back, and I'm pumped to see this Bills offense going forward with Amari Cooper. Uh, going forward with the Cincinnati Bengals with Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, uh, Browns will not be going forward with Deshaun Watson. Oof. That looks like a season-ending injury right there. I mean, it looked exactly like what we saw with Aaron Rodgers and Kirk Cousins, the Achilles. Um, that would be the fear, not official, but uh, the Bengals get the win. It was not pretty. It was it was a struggle. It was yep. a few plays, but they won by a touchdown over the rivals in Cleveland. A little like last week where you go, yeah, it's good they won, but I don't know if I feel a whole lot better about their football team. It's two good weeks of defense in a row, mm -hmm. but again, it's like two of the poorer offenses in football you're playing, right? There's also, and this is what I, I feel bad for Deshaun Watson, probably the best first half, best half of football he's played this mm -hmm. year. 
It was the first time all year I was going, man, he's kind of carving them up. He's marching down the field a little bit. And again, it's not pretty, but there was, there was things to like and go, okay, they're having a little success here. Definitely. But after that, I mean, that took the wind out of the, the whole stadium. Uh, and the Browns were never capable of doing much on the offensive side of the ball after that. And not that the Bengals were much better. But, again, it's another team I think we just talk about, like the Titans, like you were just talking about. Yeah. And the Raiders are another team that we'll talk about where you go, one side of the ball is pretty good. It's just the other side of the ball is so bad that that good side of the ball just eventually breaks. And that's what happened with this one, too. The Browns' defense kept hanging in there and giving the Browns' offense chance to, hey, here you go, here's the ball back. We're only down a score. We're only down a score. But they can only hold it down for, for so long with T. Higgins and Jamar Chase and all of that. And they started to make a few plays, and they put the Browns away. You know, as poorly as the Cincinnati Bengals have played in the first seven games, it's almost a, the three and four. You look at that, and you're like, okay, we can handle this. We can manage this, right? It, I, could, it could have been worse. It, it, it definitely could have been worse. I, I, and I do think they're a group that can manage this. They're tough there. That's the one thing I'll give them. And yeah, they got some, they got some te- games on, on the schedule – where they should be able to win. So we'll see where it goes. You know, again, they got the they got the Ravens one more time. I know that. But let me just let's yell out the teams real quick. Eagles, right? Toss up game in my opinion. Raiders. They they are better than the Raiders. Hopefully they can win. We'll see. Raiders defense though, like I said, one of those teams is good on defense. Offense so suck. So suck so and, bad. And when you hear Chris say hopefully they will win, he is in fact rooting. This is your Super Bowl team. So you are the biggest Cincinnati Bengals fan. Well, I, from I mean, here I guess on a out. little bit that and <laughs> I do like I watch like watching Joe Burrow in the playoffs. Yes. I think when he's in the playoffs, it makes things interesting. But Raiders, okay, Ravens, we know is tough. Chargers, that could be a game they win. The Steelers, the Cowboys, the Titans, the Browns again, the Broncos. Their schedule is very favorable, is what yeah. I'm saying down the stretch. There's no team that I look at and just go, oh man, the Bengals, the way they're playing, they can't beat them. The Ravens, of course, the biggest test, and we know they played them well already once before. Do you have a preference between DTR Dorian Thompson Robinson and Jameis Winston? Oh, that was maybe the weirdest thing of the day honestly right why was he third string today why Jameis yeah because you know why hmm. because they don't want they didn't want anything to be anybody calling for the backup to come in so they the guy that's their best backup they move him to third so there wouldn't be like Winston chance in the stadium today I, I don't know that was really odd that was really odd it really was Deshaun Watson uh, I feel bad for him that was a tough injury it's definitely a torn Achilles you saw it pop He's done, and I, that might I, – I mean, I don't even know what to say to Deshaun Watson. We, I think the, the old Deshaun Watson that we saw and thought it was so great, I think he's gone forever, yeah. and he's really gone forever after this injury. And I don't know. I mean, there's a part of me with Deshaun Watson. I'm like, I don't know. Should he even play? Does he even want to play anymore? It? I mean, yeah. it's just nothing's been good since he got to Cleveland. All right. We've talked about a lot of games, but – we still we have to. I mean, there's we got to talk about these other teams, right? We, we got it. We have to. Okay. Yeah. We might not want to, but we have to. <laughs> no, there's some good things to talk about with these games. We'll do that when we come up next. Welcome back to Chris Sims Unbutton, presented by Lowe's. Lowe's knows home improvement. The don't look now segment of our show. Pete, is that because we shouldn't have looked at this game? Colts <laughs> Dolphins is the next game. It's just like look away. Don't look now. The Colts are four and three. Okay, all right. So they're in the mix. You, you okay. can't say look away. You got to keep looking at them because they were, are in the mix. There were plenty of times in this game you probably should have looked away. <laughs> yes, there, it there wasn't was. the prettiest victory, but it was a victory for the Colts. No, uh, well, the the Colts, of course, are are a tough team to figure. Uh, a, a team I picked to win, but I pick them to win because I think their offensive coordinator and, and head coach Shane Steichen is awesome. Right, even with Anthony Richardson, a quarterback who's an unfinished product at, at playing the position. I mean, it's still all the things we talked about. You know, it's a little all over the place. The throws are all over the place. The decisions could be all over the place. But they still found a way to put you in a bind on offense because they can run the ball well, and the way Steichen kind of packages it together, and then when they do hit a pass, it's never the check down. It's like, whoa, there's 40 yards. So they put pressure on it that way. Now, it's not consistent, and that's an issue. And their defense is not great, but this was a good matchup. And today where they're playing backup quarterbacks, and we know the Miami Dolphins offense has not been able to find a passing game ever since Tua got hurt, and it's all about the running game. And they ran the ball well, but 
this is probably a team they could have ran for over 200 yards against, 250 against maybe, if they had a functioning passing offense too, right? Un they'd be unstoppable. Yeah. But the fact that the Colts could kind of play like, hey, we can overplay the run. We don't have to worry about the pass all the time with this group. That allowed them to ha hang in there and, and keep the, the game close. And really, it came down to two things. I mean, it was two fumbles in the third quarter by the Miami Dolphins running backs that really changed the game around. Special shout-out to Sagoon Alubi, third-year guy out of San Diego State, normally a special teams player, a game-changing strip of Raheem Mostert, covered the fumble leading to a, the Colts' only touchdown. Yeah, that, that's what started it. Uh, Four-play, 28-yard drive. is third quarter. Uh, Miami's up 10-3. Like we said, they've been running the ball. Mostert gets the ball, strip, fumble. Okay, they score a few plays later. I want to say the very next drive, they march right down the field again, and they're in inside the red zone, and they give the ball up the middle to the fullback, Alec Ingold, and he fumbles. Mm. And those were big moments of the football game that certainly changed the dynamic. And, yeah, the Colts ugly, kind of just hung in there. Tim Boyle in for Huntley, who got hurt. I think he hurt his arm or his shoulder or something like that. Uh, they weren't able to kind of maintain any offense on Miami, and Miami just – they can't win these tough, ugly football games. We saw them do it against the, the Patriots. That's the only time I can really recall them doing that, and uh, it's unfortunate. It, it really is, and the Colts come away with the win. Anthony Richardson said after the game, quote, I'm here because I'm me. I think I'm one of one, honestly. Not many people can do what I do. A lot of people understand that. It's just a matter of knowing when to do certain things. That sounds like a Eminem lyric uh, from <laughs> – Two decades ago. Well, yeah, he's 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 got talent. He's a weapon, but he's not consistent at playing quarterback. Like yet. his lines, I I don't ever I don't recall ever seeing quarterbacks with lines like this, and he has them just about every week. Ten to twenty four, forty two percent completion percentage. But then he also leads the team in rushing. Leads the team in rushing, and then yeah, it's thirteen yards per completion or whatever. There's some danger into that. True. We are seeing a year again where I'll tell you. There's a lot of quarterbacks winning games without big numbers, mm -hmm. right? It, it, it's a little bit like we talked about with Mahomes. We've seen Josh Allen do this in certain games. You just said it. The Colts do it. Whatever. Uh, it, it's, it's really about making big plays in the big moments or you get down close to the red zone. Do you kick field goals or score touchdowns, do stuff like that, right? It's, it is odd that way this year where we've seen some games where you go, wait, the team that won, the quarterback threw for 160 – right and nothing like surgical or destroying you but oh he also threw for three touchdowns and of those 160 there was like three or four plays that changed the game and the Colts have the capabilities of doing that and that that definitely stresses some defenses out Tua coming back next week is that the is that I the think that, that's that that's the what it was they and they're, they're fighting I mean they you know 54 yard field goal off the uprights right to tie the game at 13 late and that's ultimately what led to the Colts getting the short field and then kicking another field goal to go up 16-10 late. Just three touchdowns on 51 possessions for the Miami Dolphins since that Tua injury in week number two. It has been hard for them on that side of the ball. All right, it is now time for home team help presented by Lowe's. This one is the final game uh, before we talk about our Sunday night game. Rams beat the Raiders by 5, 20-15. And so for the home team help, let's give it to a, a rookie from Florida State, Jared Verse. Five quarterback hits, according to Next Gen Stats. He finished with a career-high nine pressures on 36 pass rushes against the Raiders, tied for the most pressures by a rookie in a game this season. It's impressive. He's a good football player. The Rams have a lot of guys that, I mean, play hard, physical. They're not extremely talented like we've talked on defense. they got some young guys who are going to be really talented that are finding their way, just like Jared Verse. Definitely ugly game today. Mm. But like we said a few times, like I told you, the Raiders' defense is damn good. It is. It's just they're, they're one of those teams, again, the offense is so bad that, you know, eventually the dam breaks. And that's kind of what happened in this one, you know, once again. O'Connell gets hurt, hurts his thumb, throwing the football down the right sideline, jammed on somebody trying to deflect the pass. And Minshew came in, and it was really kind of disaster the whole time he was in there. I mean, three three interceptions, a strip strip sack fumble that was returned. Maybe not for a it was returned for the touchdown, right? Yeah. Another guy I want to give a little credit to is Kobe Durant. That he had an interception of the game, and he was the guy who blitzed to strip Minshew for Cameron Curl to then pick it up and run for the touchdown. So between him and Verse, those were some some ballers out there in the football field today. But 
Uh, the the Rams run the ball tough. Stafford a few big throws and a few big moments. There's nothing special that I could sit here and talk about. The Rams aren't special. We know that right now with the state of their football team. They just want to hang around, make a game close, and then hopefully Stafford can pull it out in the fourth quarter. That's what they are. I don't think they expect to dominate anybody, but with a team like the Raiders and as unefficient as they are on offense, uh, uh, you know yeah. they look dominant at times today. But there, there we were sitting there late in the fourth quarter, and it was still only a five-point lead. I will say this, too. OK, I did think uh, Antonio Pierce's decision to kick the field goal late was not good. What? Right. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Right. It was 20 to 12. Yeah. They were on the 10 yard line. There was under three minutes left. Your offense isn't good. So why are you thinking you might drive down and sc- score a touchdown again? You're going to kick a field goal to what? You still have to score a touchdown, Right. So that one definitely did not make sense to me. Yeah. 20 to 12, fourth down, go for it. So what if you don't make it? See if you could stop them, get the ball back, go from there. Uh, I didn't understand that. That was a little confusing to me. But, yeah, the Raiders are just not a good offensive football team. Kyron Williams, a couple touchdowns. He's one of two players with a touchdown in every game this season. The other player is? Ooh, say that again. Wait, two. he's a, two. one of two players with a touchdown in every game this season. Ooh. Kyron Williams and? Ooh. Hold Name on. that player. Hold on, hold on. Touchdown in every game this season? Damn, is it a receiver or a running back? Running back. It's a running back. I'm missing somebody really easy, I feel like. I'm going to go with Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry oh, is the name. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Well Thank done. you very much. And that was Lowe's home team help. Pete in the ear of Chris giving him the answer. Never, no, he did never, not do that. He never. would never do that. Uh, all right. So we have talked about every game except for one. Except for two. Well, on Sunday. We have a Thursday. <laughs> oh, you're right. We have another Sunday game. God oh, dang it. All right. We got two more to do here. We got Steelers. It is final. Dun, 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 dun. They're doing the post game show now with Mike Tirico, Chris Collinsworth, Melissa Stark. 37 15. The Steelers get the win over the Jets. Now, if you're tuning into just this part, Chris did go off on the Jets earlier in this podcast. So just, I'm going to go you, off again, though. <laughs> okay. So if you missed that, Listen again right now because it's about to happen. I, I mean, listen, this is shocking. I mean, shocking. I don't even know what to say. This makes me, you know, if, if you're a Jets fan, how could you not go, what, are we sure Rob Sapphire and Robert Sala was the right thing to do here? I mean, let a game slip away last week in Buff, uh, against Buffalo. This week, have the game in total control lose control of it, and then get your ass whooped and don't even put up a fight or make it competitive. Then go backwards on offense because last week we talked about it, right? Shifts, motions, throw the ball down the field. It's like, oh, I got my old buddy back, Devontae. I don't want to move at all anymore, and let's go back to the same old bullshit that we weren't winning with before. I don't like it. And then the defense, I mean, yeah. I know Aaron Rodgers wasn't great, and we're going to talk about the offense and all that too, but damn. I mean, the the Jets' defense, they got so many players. They can make a play or a stop here in a big moment. I mean, that's what I think is just disappointing with me. 23-15, just let the Steelers march down the field on an 11-play, 75-yard drive. There's one guy on the Steelers that can beat you. His name is George Pickens. And what did the Jets do? Left him one-on-one the whole night. Oh, we have a great corner in Sauce Gardner, but we're not going to match him up with him at all. We're just going to tell everybody how great our corner is and keep him on this side of the field so we can keep playing zone. He's the perfect matchup for George Pickens. The only way you'll lose the game is if you let George Pickens start to go up. They let him start to go up. Disappointing all around. That is a bad loss by yeah. the Jets. 37-15, to 15, 409 yards by the Steelers' offense. Are you kidding me? It's making – I know I've been one to defend the, the Jets and go, I still believe in them. I still think they're going to have a say in the AFC. A loss like this, no doubt, makes me rethink it. Like, yeah. it really does. Well, a couple things here. Yeah. That drive at the end there, that 75-yard drive, yeah. that was seven and a half minutes. That's, so it basically took the rest of the game away. They they had maybe a slight chance before that. No chance no after chance. that. No Especially chance. Especially after the fourth and two where the Steelers go, well, we'll just 
keep going. We'll just run it. And then it's a 10 yard run by Najee Harris right there. I don't, I don't want to say they gave up at the end there, but it's, that they doesn't, like that's a bad kinda, look. I hear you. That's a bad I know what look. I mean. They, they, look, they were obviously physically beaten down for yeah. sure. The Jets' inability to have big people in the middle of their defense hurts them for sure. We're seeing teams run, of the, run the ball on them week in and week out. And not, again, like we talked about. It's not just like, oh, this is a play here, but it's like we're, I was seeing the Jets, like the Bills last week, open the, like the Steelers today, open up holes where you go, holy shit, this is one of the best defenses in football. I could drive a Mack truck through there, right? That's the stuff that's concerning. That, that I don't get. And then taking a step back on the offensive side of the ball and the way they played tonight too, yeah, very frustrating. The game is 15-6. to six. They have the ball at the end of the first half. They are driving, right? And I know some people will just go, just go into the half. Just go in 15 to 6. You have Aaron Rodgers. No. It's 15 to 6. They're driving the ball. Garrett Wilson's open over the middle. Aaron Rodgers, a little late to throw the ball and pull the trigger because he's late and reluctant to pull the trigger on any throw that's past five yards. I'm just sorry. That's the way it is. So he throws it a little late and a little reluctantly. And the Steeler defender, Bishop, did a really good job of like making a great interception, but it should never even been a thought. Garrett Wilson had cleared him. Garrett Wilson had to stop and slow down and stopped for the ball. It should have been like, no, you hit me on dead run as soon as I come out of the backside of Bishop, and I might be still running. They let that happen. Then they start off the third quarter with the ball, and the, Rogers throws a dime on the left sideline to Garrett Wilson, and the ball hits off his chest and bumps up in the air, and they intercept it and return it down to the one yard. Game was over right then. That's what I'm disappointed in. Mm -hmm. The game was over right there. That's disgraceful. I don't know what other way to say it. So, yeah, the Jets, I don't know. I'm not giving up totally, but I'm certainly like um, I'm wavering for sure, and I don't know if they're going to correct it, and that definitely makes me question the culture and everything about them tonight. On the other side, yeah, Mike Tomlin. Yeah. We calling him a genius after this? A shocking move, right? Unexpected to most. Agreed. Russell Wilson going in there. Finishes 16-29, 264 yards, couple touchdowns, no picks. Quarterback rating over 100. Hey, it was good. I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, my gosh, I was amazed by everything that he did. But I do think of what he proved is that he's just got a little bit more natural feel for the quarterback position than Justin Fields. He is a gifted, more gifted thrower. I was just saying to our producer, Matt Casey, over here, right? Like, yeah, it didn't look like it was anything like, oh, my gosh, what a great decision. Holy cow, what a great throw. But what he did do, I think, a number of times during the night is he found matchups. He went, wait, I like my guy against this guy, and I can put it in an area where I'll just go – I'll give my guy to catch it, a chance to catch it. Or he got into, wait, nobody's open. I don't know what to do. But Pickens is one on one, and the defender's back's turned. So let me throw it to him in an area to where maybe he catches it. Or the Jets, who don't have a guy in the secondary that can ever play the ball and knock it down or look at the ball, they'll get an inter pass interference. And that's kind of looked like the approach. So he gave them a bump in that, in that capacity. That's for sure. So we'll see where it goes. Uh, but. Like, the Steelers are hard to figure out, and the Jets are frustrating. Steelers, though, 4-2. and two, Yes, they as are. As we sit here, here right now, the New York Jets, the complete opposite at 2-4. and four. One more game. Don't forget about this game. I almost did. Jaguars in London, because it happened so early. Uh, they look good. Yeah. They beat the Patriots 32-16. to 16. They outrush New England 171-38, to 38. and so that's good on both sides of the ball. And now the Jaguars, don't look now, since they started 0-4, some signs of life, they've won 2-3. or Well, it, it was actually like a vice versa game of the Jaguars in London last week where the Jaguars dominated the first quarter against the Bears, mm. and then the Bears just were like, we got the next three quarters. This is what it was today. Patriots kind of controlled the game early on. You were going, damn, Doug Peterson's definitely getting fired after this game. <laughs> They're going to make him row a boat home back to Jacksonville from London. But they got it going. And the, the, the catalyst is Brian Thomas. I mean, mm -hmm. That, to me, is the catalyst. And that guy that we've been talking about at running back. Yeah, Tank, Tank Bigsby, Bigsby. 118 yards for him, a couple of touchdowns. But Brian Thomas, like you mentioned him, touchdown 89 yards. They have both those guys for yeah, sure. Yeah, big plays. And right, right, Brian Thomas had the big post down the middle at one point that set up the touchdown. Bigsby's their best runner, as I've been saying all year. And then I feel like the, the straw that broke the camel's back was the big punt return by Parker Washington. We have the dots for that. Do we got the dots I think for it was it? the first ever in an international game. 14-10. to 10, It's late in the first half. 
right? You feel like, okay, the Patriots are going to punt the ball down here and – you know, I doubt the I doubt the Jags will get out of here, and then the half will just be over, right? The, the, boop, boop, Parker Washington right up the middle finds the seam, boom, makes the punter miss, gone for a 96-yard punt return. You shouldn't catch the ball inside the five-yard line, <laughs> but he did, and so be it. Yeah. You know, I uh, that has changed, right? More I, teams do that, well, like all the, the time. The new line of demarcation, the, it used to be don't catch the ball inside the ten, right? Yeah. The punters have gotten so good that. That's not the rule anymore. The special teams coaches now, it's don't catch inside the five. Okay. Uh, but he obviously lost thought, sight of where he was, made he the to, big play. He had to, it, was a, it was a deep punt. He had to go back 10 yeah. yards. As you yeah, saw so that he with probably the lost sight of it a little bit. Uh, um. But, you know, the things I like, controlling the line of scrimmage, running the ball that way, 15 completions for 193 yards, right? Again, not dink and, nuck, dink and dunk, not yeah. bull crap like that. They're finding ways to consistently throw the ball down the field. We'll see. You know, again, it's it's just a it's a start, and the Patriots aren't good. Drake May did do some good things again. I'll say that I do like some of the things I see from Drake May. It's better than what I expected. Um, but yeah, the the Patriots are not good at defense. They don't have a great offensive line. There's not a lot to to hang your hat on there. Gerard Merrow at the end of the game says uh, we're a soft football team, and then Drake May agreed with him, saying, "quote We're not tough." So that would be uh that would be an issue. It's always an issue when people say that. I mean, the Jaguars were saying this about themselves last week, too. And yeah. what I don't understand, and, and we talked about this in the back, like, Tom, this is, is the head coach. It's mm. the head coach. I mean, that's – he set you – when did your team become tough in Detroit? Oh, when you got the tough – Dan Campbell to be the coach, right. Mm -hmm. You know, when did the Vikings defense become good? Oh, when they got a tough – Brian Flores to be their defensive coordinator, right? I mean, usually teams mirror their coaches. Why was New England good for two decades straight? Because their coach is tough and detailed every day of his life, and the team was like that too, right? Yeah. You know? So th that, that I, I don't get. I mean, toughness is a choice of way of life. It's an it's, it's, it's an inst like it's installed a culture, it's a culture, culture yeah. right, skill in a human being. And it can be taught, and it can be bred through a football team. So when I hear some coaches say we're not tough or whatever else, I would go, well, that's your fault. The toughness falls on the head coach. Yeah. We talk about the Kansas City Chiefs. All those years, Andy Reid, right? They're not tough. They're not tough. All right. Something switched, and now yeah. they're the toughest team we see in football. You got to be that way, and, and yeah, I don't get that. But yeah, they're not real good. It's a rebuilding year for their yeah, New England. But Drake May is certainly a a bright bright light for for the organization. Good for him. I would assume though that the players in the locker room probably not crazy about hearing the coach say that, and probably even less crazy about hearing the rookie quarterback say that. About no, them, it, well, it, they'll give the rookie quarterback a pass because they're just going to go. He's a rookie. Hear the coach say it, and he's saying it. They, they're true. not worried about that. The coach, yeah. There'll definitely be a few guys that'll be like, man, what's he talking about? I'm, I'm tough. I've I'll been show him it. not tough. Right. And then he doesn't right. even show up. But he's a defensive coach, and he didn't like the way that looked today. Sure. His defense got pushed around. They let up some big plays, and you know they were out of that game really uh, by the early third quarter. Time for the real Don't Forget segment. Don't forget Thursday. You were basically spot on. The Broncos cleaned up on the Saints 33-10. I'm, I'm, for the second week in a row, sitting here on a Sunday night, 11-2 and two with my picks. Dang. Like I feel like I got a pretty good feel for the league right now. I do. I know I'm not perfect, but this is one I felt like I said to you last week on Wednesday. The starting receivers aren't there. The Broncos are one of the best defenses in football. I know that Bo Nix and the Broncos offense is not like going to light up the scoreboard, but with Sean Payton and the motivation of coming back for Drew Brees night in New Orleans and all that, I knew they would just slowly whoop the shit out of the New Orleans Saints. And that's basically what happened. It wasn't pretty. It was just a slow beat down. Run the ball. Bo Nix made some good runs, a few efficient passes. He missed some passes early on in the football game. Defense scored a touchdown. The Broncos are going to be like this all year. I wouldn't be shocked if they snuck in the playoffs somehow I, I, like this, agree. right? They're that kind of team. And, yeah, like, like almost like the Chiefs. We'll play defense, and yet I have a really good offensive coach and big games all. We'll game plan a few special things, and that'll be enough offense in those games. We'll see. Uh, but I kind of enjoy the Broncos' old-school style of physicality football play. They just got to go back to those old-school unis. Those old-school unis, more. Yeah. I like those way yeah. more than their current ones. Uh, two games on Monday still to come. Let's we'll start with the Ravens at the Buccaneers. It's a, a line of three and a half. The Ravens are the favorite. You think that the Ravens will not only cover, but this is going to be a shootout, shootout. high-scoring game. Shootout. These are two meathead coaches that are going to be like, 
Stop the run. We can't beat this team unless we stop the run. Oh, yeah, but, Coach, they can throw for 450 in the pass game. Stop the run. I mean, that's, that's, it's just I feel like it's setting up for that. Todd Bowles going to be like, I can't let them run the ball. And Lamar's going to be like, whoa, Zay Flowers is wide open. Whoa, Morgan. <laughs> and I feel like it's the same thing on the other side. The Ravens are going to be like, oh, we can't let the Bucks run the ball with these new running backs they got and all that. And Baker Mayfield's going to be like, man, Mike Evans is wide open running down the football field. Neither one of these defenses are very good. Both of these offenses are explosive and aggressive. So, yeah, I'm taking the Ravens in a shootout. And then we got the Chargers-Cardinals. Yeah, that's the, the, the first one's the more compelling game. But then you do have the Chargers and Cardinals. The Chargers are favored by a point and a half. You are off on – you are not – feeling the Cardinals right now because no. you think the Chargers win this one by 11, 28-17. I, I kind of feel it's almost like the Saints-Broncos game. It'll be a slow beatdown. That's, that's what it'll be. Not going to be pretty. We're going to probably be sitting there in the early third quarter going, it's 13-6 to six or 13-7, to seven, and then they're going to get a strip sack and have a short field, and we're going to go, oh, it's 20-7, to seven, and then they're going to get another short field from field position, and we're going to go, oh, it's 27-7. to seven. And then the Cardinals are going to drive down and kick a field goal late. Like That's kind of how I look at it. I don't think the Cardinals are super talented. I think the Chargers' defense is awesome, like really damn good. You talk about the AFC West, four defenses out there. Mm. And then they're going to run the ball, and Herbert will make three or four passes where you go, whoa, that was awesome, and the Cardinals are night-night. So that's kind of how I see it happening. All right, two games to look forward to on Monday. DraftKings Sportsbook is the number one place to bet touchdowns, and new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Download the app and use the promo code UNBUTTON when you sign up. DraftKings, DraftKings Sportsbook, the, the crown, crown is yours. yours. If you told me that we still had three games to talk about, I would believe you. i will go, how did I miss those, too? Yeah. But we don't, yep. actually. No, nope, we done. don't. We're done. We did it. It's another night in the books. Week seven is in the books, at least for this podcast. We, right, we got two more games tomorrow night. It is 11.52 p.m. on a Sunday night. <laughs> uh, I would like to note that the Yankees will be going to the World Series against the uh, Los Angeles Dodgers. Sorry, Mets fans and Jets fans uh, out there. Yep, Pete's the matchup you me. wanted, the matchup you it wanted. Is the Pete matchup is a Mets fan. fan. Yeah. It was Matt a no-win situation. But for all good things football, you know where to find us. We'll be back here for the pick six on Wednesday. Thank you, as always, Ahmed, for driving the ship, flying halfway across of the country course. to do the pod. I mean, who else does that? It's what we do. We pay you nothing except <laughs> energy drinks, and you fly across halfway to the country to come do this. It's what we do. You it's know where to find do. us. Subscribe, rate, review. We'll see you Wednesday on the pick six pod. Have a good week. Enjoy Monday night football. Peace out, homies. Clap it up. Clap it up. Yo, yo, homies, thanks for watching. Yeah, it's time. The NFL season is here on Chris Sims Unbuttoned. You can hit subscribe to get all the weekly picks, plus our Sunday recaps as the games are happening. Oh, you know it. Nobody does that better than us. Thanks again for watching. Remember to subscribe. Peace out. We'll see you next time on Unbuttoned.